one thing we do have more info on is the Russell's Reserve Single Rick House. We're bringing it back to Kentucky here at Wild Turkey over in Lawrenceburg. And they have a new product that uh, our good friend Rarebird101 is teased. Well, I guess he's done more than tease it. Yeah, I mean, he's effectively launched the press release for them, which I think makes total sense. That's where I go for any of my wild turkey news anyway. So the fact that DJ is able to write this up, taste this up, and let everybody know what it's about is a really cool thing. Uh, the details on the release are obviously, like Jay said, it's the Russell Reserve Single Barrel Rick House, or I'm sorry, Single Rick House. So this is all sort of to highlight their Warehouse C, mm -hmm. and it is composed of 72 barrels, which are selected from the third and fourth floors of the Camp Nelson Rick House C. So this is really just sort of like kind of the opposite of what the single barrel crowd chases, right? Like we talk about like, is this one a Camp Nelson A? Is this one a Tyrone A? Like what, what season is it for selecting the barrels and everybody's sort of chasing down like the ones that they love the most, which floor from which Rick House. And this is kind of the opposite of that, where this is, this is the Rick House all of these barrels came from. And this is like the essence of Camp Nelson Warehouse C. Let's dive in and really just expand a product around a historic piece of this distillery, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it kind of takes what has become, you know, a quintessential component of Wild Turkey fandom, which, you know, I have to say, uh, Rarebird 101, our friend David Jennings over there, I can't think of a more competent person to release a product on behalf of um, one of the less competent marketing department. Like, you know, oh, Wild yeah. Turkey releases have always just kind of been like throwing a bunch of marbles in the air and just hoping that like they get where they need to go. But, you know, uh, thanks to his dedication over the last couple of years, like he is the man who got consumers interested in individual wild turkey warehouses. So it's really interesting to see Campari maybe not pick up on his work directly, but pick up on what they're seeing in the market, which is people focusing on where did this single barrel come from? And as a result, like you know, Camp Nelson C is about to get knocked over, so it's very cathartic to see it being honored in in a way with a new release. But um, and there's also a ton of Wild Turkey Kentucky spirits from Camp Nelson C coming out this year. So I think you know they're empty in the warehouse. They're giving us something interesting, and I, I look forward to tasting it. Yeah, it's a really cool way to honor a piece of the brand's history, the history just of that area, and I'm just like I'm also excited that we're able to scoop this up on DJ's website and get like, it's not just like, here's a press release. Right. Cause you know, that's just not his style either, but you know, he's going to give you a little bit of the history about it, tell you the tasting notes and sort of tell you why it means something that this is from warehouse C, which a press release I don't think really captures. So again, Kumpar's releasing of products usually leaves a little bit to be desired to put it nicely. And I, I think that this is a good way forward for them. I just, I hope that he's going to continue to manage some of these releases because it makes a hell of a lot more sense this way. Yeah, this was, I mean, this was the first time on date where I saw, hey, a new product is releasing. Here's some actual information about it. Right. You know, um, like that's really all that needs to be said. I don't know if we know the price. I think like 139, 99 to 139 is kind of the rumor of what I'm hearing through the grapevine I know that there's not going to be a ton of this. Where do you think this is going to fall on the hype scale compared to things like those single cast nation bottles or even just Masters Keep? Yeah. So, I mean, we're talking about something that's not age dated, but we know that it's going to be 72 barrels. So, I mean, it, it's going to be a pretty tight release, I think. Okay. A few thousand bottles. I mean, if we look at our tech data sheet that we run, uh, you guys can catch a link to that. We'll put it in the show notes of like the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection stuff. Historically, they had released how many barrels went into the batch of products. Told you the evaporation. You could sort of do the rough math and get a rough bottle count that way. Sure. I think you'd be in a little bit of trouble with this one just because they're third and fourth. It's probably going to be a pretty good amount, of, uh, good amount of evaporation, but it's not age stated. So we're just going to be kind of guessing either way. I still think probably going to be looking at less than 10,000. Yeah, I was thinking probably 8 to 10,000. And honestly, with the state of American whiskey right now, 8 to 10,000 bottles means like you you better know when it's coming and you sure better know where it's coming and hope you're Damn in the right. right place at the right time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
if there's less than 50,000 bottles of it, it's going to be damn hard to get. I mean, yeah, we've, we've been kind of doing some napkin math. Like George T. Stagg has to be at least 45,000 these days. And I, I mean, I, for one, maybe things are different in Maine, even though I know they're not. Like, I haven't seen a George T. Stagg on shelves since like 2015. No, they don't go on shelves here, man. <laughs> it does not happen. <laughs>